Well, I it's still intend to compare the Juntec uh, 9080 with the uh, the FY6900 and with uh, one or two of the Siglent models, but uh, I, I've been having so much fun learning the little idiosyncrasies of these two units that I decided to make a video on some of what I found out about the 9080. Now there's a pretty good video on uh, YouTube already that Juntec published. There are actually two. One is very short, only uh, less than two minutes, but the other one is uh, more than 20 minutes, and it's fairly comprehensive. Uh, unfortunately, once again, the they've chosen to use one of these uh, digital to speech converters and uh, and so there's a little bit it's, it's pretty well done for that format but it would be better if they'd actually pay a technician who speaks English to sit down and uh, and go through all of that but once again that's that's my rant uh, for for all of these uh, Chinese uh, devices basically it is that they're selling themselves short because the device is actually better than the manual and and that's not a good idea well anyway so so what am I doing uh, with this well this morning what I'm looking at is the pulse performance of this uh, Juntec 90 PSG 9080 what you see on the screen on the uh, Rigol scope over there is a 1 megahertz signal uh, in the pulse waveform output, which is really just a square wave that uh, with an adjustable duty cycle. They don't actually, uh, you don't actually set a pulse width like you do with a traditional pulse generator. What you do is you set a frequency, in this case a megahertz, and then a duty cycle where the duty cycle gives you the pulse width that you are looking for. So, so what are we seeing? Well, this is a 2 nanosecond per division uh, display and the you'll notice it's 2, 4, 6, uh, 8 and let me move that over a little bit maybe about right there and then we get uh, two, four, six, eight nanoseconds pulse width. Uh, it should actually be 10 because I have a 1% duty cycle, but that's, uh, you know, at, at these tiny pulse widths and so on, uh, you're, you're going to be a little bit off. What I mainly wanted to show you, though, is the effect of the proper termination. Now I'm using just a BNC cable to connect the output of the uh, Juntec to the input of the Rigol. Let me now, and by the way, I have the Rigol set for a 50 ohm input impedance. So now let me go to a 1 mega ohm input impedance and I have to reduce the amplitude and reset the uh, trigger a little bit. I want to set it up here until we get just about the same thing. Uh, now, you may notice what has happened earlier, and I'll go back to 50 in a second so you can compare it. Notice that here, this is ground. Well, I have it set with an offset. So, two volts peak to peak with a 1 volt offset means that it starts at 0 volts and goes to 2 volts and back to 0 volts. But notice here it's undershooting quite a bit. Let's go back now to a 50 ohm load and And there you see we don't have nearly as much uh, undershoot. That's a result 
of not properly terminating a coax cable. In other words, this has nothing to do with the generator or the scope. It has to do with purely when you don't terminate the connection between the generator and the measuring instrument. The, uh, you get the ar these artifacts like that undershoot. Okay, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go on and work with some more things, but so far I've been pretty impressed with this Juntec uh, PSG uh, 9080. Okay, I just booted up the uh, Juntec PSG 9080, and you may notice that it came up in a completely different, it came up with a uh, 10,000 hertz, 2 volt, signal with a 1 volt offset on both channels. Now that's not the default setting. The default setting would be, for example, the amplitude would be 5 volts. By the way, while I'm at it, I like the uh, the rotary encoder in this. It's very, it's very crisp and precise. Uh, has a nice feel. Uh, also, it seems to be very reliable. Uh, so, this would be the default setting for the amplitude. Let me show you how you change that. All you have to do is, once you get the screen set up the way you like it, you go to the system menu and then page down, and you'll see a key over on the right called save. If you hit save, it will save in a particular memory, and in this case it's memory zero. That's the default setting. Now, let's turn it off and turn it back on. And you'll notice it now came up with the 5 volt, uh, which was the original default. So that's how you save the, uh, the configuration that you want the unit to power up in. Now there's also uh, a uh, key in the system menu that lets you return it to the original factory defaults. One reason I mention this is I think it's a good idea to have the unit power up with the channels turned off, the outputs, rather than on, which is the default that comes from the factory. And whether you want to adjust the voltages or frequencies and so on, uh, that's personal preference, but I think for safety reasons, it's a good idea to have these come up off because you never know when you have something connected to a powered circuit and you power up your generator and you're not expecting there to be an output, but there is. But what that will do to your circuit or if it's a high voltage circuit or a circuit where you're, you might be in contact with uh, some of the terminals, that may uh, energize a relay or or make a connection that uh, that applies power to a place that isn't really very safe until you're ready to do so. So I suggest that if you do nothing else, you set the default of your generator to both channels off and then save that in memory zero. Okay, let's move on. I've learned another way to save the power on state of the Juntec uh, 9080, you notice that it comes up uh, in this case with the channels turned off. I'm going to turn on the channel 1 and you'll notice that over on the uh, Rigol oscilloscope is the, uh, is the waveform display. And now a new way to save that state is to press and hold the home key and you notice when you turn it loose it sounds a little bit longer beep. Now if I turn the power off and back on it comes up with channel 1. Now we'll turn that off and save that state And now it comes back 
as it is. Now it will save everything about the configuration. It'll save the type of waveform for each channel, the frequency, amplitude, offset, duty cycle, and so on for all of those. So whatever you have the, the uh, 9080 set to, if you press and hold the home key and then turn it loose, uh, it will replace the power up with whatever the uh, status of the 9080 was when you did that. I've been looking at the way that the 9080 uses duty cycle. You may notice that I have a triangle wave and the uh, displayed on the oscilloscope. I'm going to now go to a ramp and you may notice that the duty cycle changes slightly and then I'm going to come back to the generator again so you can see that. Notice that the uh, duty cycle is indicated at 40 percent and that's a previous value that I'd entered but now watch what happens when I go back to the triangle it goes to 50 percent in other words it will not allow you to adjust the duty cycle of a triangle wave but now I'm going to put in duty and I'm going to say 20 percent and by the way if you object to the beeps I could turn those off I don't particularly mind them but some people don't uh, like the beeps so uh, in the utility menu it's uh, called sound just turn off sound uh, so notice that what we've got on the screen is the same triangle wave now I'm going to go to the ramp wave And notice now that the value for duty cycle that I entered, which was 20%, has been retained and applied. But remember, I entered this value of 20% while I was in the triangle wave. So my assumption is that the way this works is it stores the duty cycle value in a separate memory. And then when you get to a waveform that duty cycle applies to it uses that value. So you can set duty cycle even if you're set to a wave that won't allow you to adjust duty cycle and then that duty cycle will be used the next time you bring up a wave that does allow a duty cycle. Kind of curious but nonetheless once you understand it becomes uh, uh, something oh, you just have to know. The uh, ramp notice I have the, the the ramp set with an offset normally when it displays by the way the scope is DC coupled and so this is the ground level or zero volt level and I have it set for a two volt peak to peak and you may notice it's 500 millivolts or half a half a volt per division so two volts from peak to peak starting at zero volts and going to plus two volts. Now what I'm going to do is go to the CMOS. Notice that it has jumped up and that's because it interprets an offset in the CMOS uh, position as applying it from zero volts rather than from the midpoint. So it has moved the CMOS base up by a full volt. Now I'm going to uh, press offset and as I turn it down notice it's there it's a volt high. Let me readjust the uh, trigger here and there it's it's based on the ground level. So in other words you need to be careful that you understand what's going on with regard to offset and with regard to the uh, size of the waveform. Now, 
it might be a good time for me also to talk about the output stages and there is a good video that I recommended uh, by Roberts Smorgasbord about the output stages of these uh, units. That particular one he was talking about the FY6800 but it applies to all of these arbitrary waveform generators and that is the, the output stages can only produce a maximum positive voltage and a maximum negative voltage. And the actual peak-to-peak uh, -peak value is influenced by the offset. So suppose that your generator will produce plus and minus 20 volts. Uh, or, I'm sorry, will produce 20 volts peak-to-peak. -peak. That means it can go to plus 10 volts and minus 10 volts. But that's assuming the offset is set to zero. If you try to use the full peak-to-peak -peak value of the uh, generator, and then you try to apply an offset, it will say, no, I won't let you offset this because you're already at the maximum. In other words, you have to reduce the level, the peak-to-peak -peak level, to give you some headroom if you want to offset the waveform from zero. Well, this video now is long enough, I think, to, uh, to be worth posting, but I don't uh, pretend that it's anywhere near all of the functions and features of the 9080. Uh, just a few that I found interesting and things that I wanted to point out. So I'm hoping that I can move on to compare the uh, this 9080 with the FY6900 that's above it and uh, and also hopefully compare it to a uh, one or more of the Siglent arbitrary waveform generators that I own. Uh, what I could do is compare it to the 2122X the I think it's SDG 2122X, but that's a very expensive and and much better uh, generator. So I think what I'm going to do instead, and it's also a 16-bit instead of a 14-bit. This one and the Juntek are both 14 bits. So I think what I'm going to do instead is compare it to a uh, an, an Siglent. 14-bit generator. I think it's called a 1032X. At any rate, I have it on order. It should come in in a few days, and as soon as it arrives, I'll, I'll finish the comparison between the Juntec 9080 and the FY6900, as well as, hopefully, the Siglent 1032X. So I hope you've enjoyed this and learned a little bit. I'm certainly learning a lot about both of these generators. Uh, in, in, a, in a future video, what I want to do is compare things like the harmonic distortion of each of these generators. Obviously, that's with And also, I would like to do some other uh, things like uh, compare the square wave, uh, see what the spectral purity is, whether what the... Uh, what it looks like on a, on a spectrum analyzer, and perhaps even a few other things. But basically, get some kind of quantitative measure of the relative, uh, I guess fidelity is the word I would use, of these generators to produce the way their uh, advertised waveforms. So look forward to that. Stay safe. Have a nice day.